Hello students, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Harising Gaur Vishwadale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today, I am going to present a lecture of Scene of Crime, Part 3rd for BSc 3rd semester on the unit Criminalistics, which has been jointly prepared by Professor Devashish Bose and Giriraj Sharma, PhD scholar, UGC GRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwadale, Sagar. Let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Module 1 Introduction to Crime Scene Investigation Module 2 Protection of Scene of Crime Module 3 Preservation of Scene of Crime Module 4 Photography Module 5 Importance of Photography Module 6 Judicial Principle of Photography Module 7 Prerequisites of Admissibility in Court Module 8 Conclusion Today, there are many crime scene investigative models available to the investigating team which will work as a backbone to the investigation. These models also have their positive and negative attributes. However, they lead the investigation in a positive way and provide good result. But investigating officer should not forget to take the proper selection of method. Selection of method plays a key role in the criminal investigation. There are many factors which can affect the method of selection such as skill of the investigating officer, knowledge of the investigating officer to the subject, experience of the investigating officer, type of crime, type of crime scene, available resources to the investigating officer, manpower, qualifications, availability of forensic science services, etc. Protection means save the physical evidence of the crime scene as it was left by the perpetrator. As we know that there are tremendous evidence at the scene of crime by which perpetrator can be arrested or convicted at a court of law. So, dear student, the main objective of the protection of crime scene is to protect the physical evidence from contamination. This object can be fulfilled by the first responding officer. So, it is the most crucial step in the investigation of crime because the whole investigation procedure depends on this. Protection of the crime scene can be done by first responding officer. When the first responding officer arrives at the scene of crime, often one finds a very chaotic, disturbed or uncontrolled situation. The first responders can be formed different fields such as police, the firefighting officers or medical personnels. The most important thing is that these first responding officers are the only people to see the scene of crime in its original condition. However, there are many examples in which the first responding officer intentionally or unintentionally changes or alters the crime scene from its original condition or location. So dear student, as we know that crime scenes have peculiar characteristics such as rapidly changing environment, dynamic contamination etc. First of all, we shall study about the duties of first responding officer. The first responding officer First of all, identify and assist the victim if he or she, the person, is alive. If victim is unconscious, in this situation, the first responding officer should immediately call for medical attention. If the victim does not show the sign of life, then the body should be shifted to a mortuary. Start for locating suspect. Protect the crime scene from onlookers and contamination of the people, barricading the whole scene of crime, whether it is indoor, outdoor or mobile, and leave small portion of the crime scene for entry and exit 
of the forensic scientist and investigating officers. First responding officer should eliminate all the unauthorized people, whether they are family members, friends, relatives, neighbors, journalists, photographers, or curious onlookers. In many cases, it has happened that the crime scene is disturbed by curious onlookers. So, care must be exercised while protecting the crime scene. Also, the investigating officer should not permit his or her colleague who are not related with the crime investigation. Report all the development to higher authorities. Whatever changes he does at the crime scene, that will be reported to the crime scene investigator. Dear student, it is the brief about the duties of first responding officer. Now we shall study what one should not do at the crime scene. Don't permit the unnecessary personnel to enter the crime scene. Don't use those routes which have been used by suspects. Don't fail to document any changes at the crime scene. One should not eat or use any facility within the crime scene. One should not remove items or packages without documenting them. One should not touch the physical evidences by bare hand. One should not alter or change the place of physical evidence before its recording. One should not take photographs without scale. These are the guidelines for the first responding officer which one has not to perform. Dear student, here I would like to clear this module with the help of this photograph. Here is this photograph. We have an outdoor crime scene which has been protected by all possible sources which is necessary for the investigation of crime scene. The crime is barricaded by yellow strip which do not allow any unauthorized personnel to cross the crime scene. Dear students, Preservation of the scene of crime is of utmost importance to the investigating officer because this is the main base and initial point of the investigation. As we know that all the physical evidences which are related to the crime are found at the crime scene. Other than this, the scene of crime is itself great evidence against culprit or peculiar characteristics of crime scene. Condition of the window door, dead body, etc. or actual position of the physical evidence or their connection or the physical state of the physical evidence. By now, we have discussed that the crime scene is very dynamic and changeable in nature. The scene of crime can be affected by natural and unnatural factors also. These factors could be explained with the help of suitable example. For example, natural factor. Natural factors are those factors which do not involve human activity such as rain, flood, wind, earthquake or landslide. By these factors, crime scene can be partially or completely disturbed. Unnatural factor. It mainly involves the human or animal activity. For example, curious onlookers at the scene of crime. Dear students, now we shall study the crime scene photography. So first of all, I would like to explain the photography and its principle. Commonly it is an old saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Somewhere it holds true with the crime scene photography also. It doesn't matter how investigating officer can verbally describe the scene of crime. Photographs of the scene of crime can explain the same story better and in more easy way. As we know that photography is the best preservation method of crime scene. However, this best method doesn't need any degree or diploma in photography. But at least one should know the basic principle and methodology of photography. Therefore, the investigating officer should not touch or move any physical evidences from one place to another place without taking photography. Dear student, while taking the photographs, 
वन शुड कीप इन माइंड क्राइम सीन फोटोग्राफी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम आर्टिस्टिक फोटोग्राफी क्राइम सीन फोटोग्राफी इज फ्री फ्रॉम एनी आर्टिस्टिक एक्सप्रेशन द फोटोग्राफी मस्ट बी टेकन इन क्लियर एंड एक्यूरेटली डिपिक्ट द सीन एज इट वॉज फाउंड इट ऑल्सो डिपिक्ट द पाथ ऑफ पर्परेटर टू द क्राइम सीन एंट्री एंड एग्जिट पॉइंट ऑफ द कल्प्रिट Detailed photographs also shows the extended picture of the crime scene. Dear students, now I would like to explain the objective of crime scene photography. It is to provide a visual record of the scene and related areas to record as it is or as such appearance of the crime scene and physical evidence. To bring the permanent record for the investigating officer as well as to the court of law dear students till now we have discussed the role of photography and its object to the scene of crime after it we shall discuss on type of camera film type and other necessary accessories to take photographs there are different type of cameras available in the market which can be still camera digital camera etc Only few years ago crime scene were exclusively photographed by still camera today the existence of still camera is only in the lane of memory and books still camera were cumbersome in many ways such as the maintenance of the camera use of film time taking development process maintenance of record etc while digital when digital camera came in existence it replaced the still camera because the quality and cost of digital camera made it possible so dear student here we will have short summary on main film based photography used in crime scene investigation following are the type of camera larger format camera only a few years ago crime scene photography was performed by larger format camera these cameras used to produce a larger photograph with large negative that can result in more clarity with when enlarging photograph dear student for example if the two identical scene of crime were photographed with a 4 into 5 inch camera and a 35 mm camera using the same type of film after photographing when you will match the resolution of the photo crime scene photographer will find that larger format camera give greater resolution in comparison to other cameras in addition these cameras are also useful for photography of very small objects at crime scene such as hairs fibers glass particles etc however 35 mm cameras became the norm because of low cost and ease of use in addition the 35 mm single lens reflex camera offered the greatest versatility point and shoot camera these cameras are also useful in a variety of cases these cameras are basically still camera but they are different from single lens reflex cameras These cameras are very simple in operation and are useful for officers who do not have much training in photography. Dear students, point and shoot camera are inexpensive, easy to carry, cost effective and take acceptable pictures. Polaroid camera. Polaroid camera is also significant in many cases such as for identification photography. The quality of photograph is better and acceptable in comparison to other. However, Polaroid film is expensive and not readily available. Now we come to digital camera. Digital cameras replace the still camera and represent the latest technology or universally accepted in every aspect. Digital photography is very cost effective in compared to still photography. Digital photographic images are stored on digital media storage cards instead of films. These cards can be placed into a computer and viewed on the screen and printed out using a specialized printer. Dear student, now we shall study about the photography kit. 
A photographic kit can contain following type of basic equipments. Camera, zoom lens, 35-70mm, normal lens, 50mm, wide angle lens, close up lens, set of auto extension tube, filter, ultraviolet, blue green, yellow, orange or red, tripod, flashlight, scales, lock sheets, film color and black and white, electronic flashes, synchronized cord for flash and a camera bag. Dear students, photography is a simple and excellent method for preservation of crime scene. Class characteristics, individual characteristics of crime scene, position of the physical evidences, condition of the physical evidence and their relation with other evidences can be seen clearly by photographs. It is a matter of fact, photography is the essential tool for the preservation of crime scene which is used in the whole world. Importance of photography can be understood by the following reason. 1. Admissible in court as evidence. Court of law accepts photograph of any case as crucial evidence. Generally, honorable judges, honorable jury members, prosecutors and opposition lawyers do not visit scene of crime but all of them get information about the crime scene facts from good photography. Therefore, while taking photography, crime scene photographer should be more conscious and alert about the position of the evidence. 2. Recording for injuries which are present on victim's body. Dear students, as we know that everything changes with the passage of time. So, when victim's body contain any such type of evidence which can be recorded by photography in as such form. For example, wounds on body, injuries, scratch, bruises, etc. Bite marks, ligature marks or post-mortem lividity, etc. So, the record of the evidences can be maintained for longer time with the help of colored photography. Third, Recording for physical evidence at crime scene. Crucial evidence of the crime such as tire mark, skid mark, footprint, fingerprint, blood splatter, entry and exit hole from bullet, tool marks, glass fractures and modus operandi related evidence such as broken window, entry and exit point of the perpetrator etc. All these evidence can neither be lifted from crime scene in an easy way or could not be left at crime scene. 4. For better investigation. Sometimes it happens that investigating officer could not see the trace evidence which can be easily observed through the photography taken at scene of crime. 5. Help in corpus delicti. It also assists in the corpus delicti evidence. For example, in the case of robbery, a particular person can deny their presence at the crime scene, but with the help of photography, it can be proved easily one was present or absent. 6. Revolution in the facts. While investigating a case, investigating officer can deviate from the investigation due to the effect of hearsay evidences. In this situation, photograph of the crime scene can clear the picture. For understanding it easily, let's take an example. One eyewitness said to investigating officer about the position of the firearm at the crime scene that was extremely left to the victim, while investigating officer saw the photograph of the crime scene. Investigating officer found that it was right to the victim. So, dear students, Photographs will not provide wrong information of the crime scene. 7. For refreshing memory. Dear students, as we know that photographs assist in the refreshing of the memory of investigating officer. After examining crime scene, investigating officer may explain each and everything of the crime scene, but 
with the help of passage of time it would be difficult to the investigating officer to remember each and everything so for memorizing the minute thing investigating officer can use the photographs 8 to introduce the case to a new investigating officer transfer of investigating officer from one police station to another police station is a common phenomenon but it affects investigation of the case when a new investigating officer joins and take up investigation of a crime one can get the information about the crime from the photographs of the crime scene so dear students photographs will provide detailed information about the crime scene 9 role of movie camera during riots movie camera can play a significant role in riot cases that it can record the whole scene of crime by which the identification of perpetrators can be done identification of perpetrator at the crime scene dear students there are many examples in which perpetrators had been identified through photographs of the crime scene a perpetrator may be present in the crowd hence investigating officer can use these photographs for the screening of perpetrator as well as the physical evidences for example the main accuse of the assassination of our ex honorable prime minister shri rajiv gandhi ji's death was identified with the help of photographs only dear students now we shall study about the judicial principle of photography following are the principle generally the crime scene photography should per performed by the police photographer in absence of the police photographer the photography should conducted by investigating officer if he or she is capable for doing it or one can do photography who fulfills the requirement of the photography such as one who should have at least 25 years of photographic experience degree or diploma of photographic two investigating officer should not touch or move physical evidences from one place to another place before taking the photographs of the physical evidence as well as the crime scene three crime scene photographer should do one thing that is to take two photographs of every physical evidences in undisturbed state after that he should take photograph with scale fourth to highlight the trace evidence in photograph at crime scene investigating officer must make a circle around the trace evidence fifth trick photograph is prohibited at crime scene investigating officer should apply normal angle and direct direction for taking a photograph sixth investigating officer should capture the crime scene from eye level so that whole crime scene can be easily viewed seventh each and every physical evidence should be taken from three different distance in first photograph investigating officer should take overall view of the physical evidence Okay. Eighth, quality of crime scene photography should be more than the general quantity. Ninth, investigating officer should keep a clear record of every sequence of photograph, number of camera, lens attachment, direction, date, and time. Tenth, the size of the photo should be six inch by eight inch or eight inch by ten inch. it is the excellent size 11th negatives of the photograph should be well preserved so that these negatives could be used by the time in digital photography negatives are not required 12th crime scene photographer must capture the whole crime scene for this purpose the police photographer should take the photo in systematic way photography of the outer area of the crime scene photography of the exit and entry point of the crime scene photography of the main crime scene with corpus delicti evidence in case of murdered crime scene first of all he should take the photo of the injuries wounds 
biological fluids and trace evidences. So dear student, it was all about the principle of photography. So the crime scene photographer must take the photography from different direction and angles. While capturing the crime scene, physical evidence should not be disturbed at all. Dear students, now we shall study about the admissibility of the case photographs in court of law. The admissibility of the photograph depends on several factors which are of following type. Photography of the scene of crime must be done by police photographer or professional photographer who fulfills the eligibility criteria related to photography or one who has a 25 years photography experience. Court allows only those photographs which are relevant to crime scene and physical evidence. Doubtful photographs are not accepted by court. Dear student, tricky photography is totally prohibited in court. Court also permits colored photographs. Investigating officer should not present more photographs in court because it can make confusion to honorable judge. Dear student, in this lecture we have discussed many beautiful things such as crime scene investigation model, protection of crime scene, preservation of scene of crime, photography of crime scene, importance of photography, judicial principle of photography, prerequisites of admissibility in honorable court, etc. After having this knowledge of these beautiful things, an investigating officer can deal with crime scene in a scientific way and reveal more and more information from the crime scene. With all these information here, we come to the end of today's lecture. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Professor Devashish Bose signing off. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes, LORs on www.cec.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.